I am recording. I have my tasty beverage. Mm -hmm. A lot to cover today. It's really been workflow for the last two days. And the reason it's been workflow is uh, my basic plan was to take this storyboard and morph the storyboard into still fully colored frames, not really focus on animation um, for a couple reasons, but the idea is to create the assets that later are going to be animated. And for the most part, if getting the mechanics of a given shot lend itself easily to doing the animation right then and there, then I'll go ahead and do it, which I have done in many cases, just because it only takes a few minutes. However, yesterday, bumped into a shot, which, by the way, was not this one, and let me make sure I've got the right shot. Uh, which heck one was it? Uh, I guess it was back here. It was this one. Uh, 773? Oh, no. No, 775. Okay, so... So I'm going to take this shot of TNR out and kind of show what I what I was doing here. Um, so I created these keys, and it's not bad actually. I mean, the animation aspect of it is pretty decent. Um, let's just go ahead and kind of loop this and see what we have. So, so she's kind of looking pensive, and then. And, and the pauses that need to happen are not in here yet. But basically what happens is she, she realizes she lost her pendant. So I'm, I'm reasonably satisfied, actually, with how it turned out. But, but the process was, um, it, you know, I kind of felt like I was getting bogged down because what I realized was that I kind of wear two hats. And one hat is when I'm either drawing or painting backgrounds or, or, or animating. At that point, I'm Mr. Creative Guy, and what I'm doing is I'm I'm really I'm kind of sketching a line, and I can kind of see the character in my mind, and I feel it, and I I'm dealing with the emotion of the story we're telling, blah blah blah. I'm Mr. Creative Guy. I'm I'm creating the story. When I jump into Open Tunes, I'm Mr. Managerial Guy. I'm taking the assets, dragging them into the environment, deciding what's the least that I have to do in order to take those assets and do whatever has to happen in order to generate the final result that I'm after. I enjoy wearing both of those hats. The key thing is those hats cannot really get convoluted. If they do, then what happens is I find myself in this situation where I'm kind of supposed to be executing, which is to, in this case, just do the ink and paint. Paint the main pose of the character. If there's another pose that you want to create here, you know, like in Creative, for example, here, no problem. You know, if it needs more than one keyframe, yada, yada, yada. In this case, it needs quite a few, actually. Although there's a strong case to be made for considering how this shot could have been completely restaged so that this animation wasn't necessary. And I, I'm developing some fairly strong opinions on why that's important. Because what's the difference between the two hats? The difference between the two hats is timing. When I'm drawing, and even when I'm doing keyframes, I'm thinking about the emotion, the attitude, the pose, the story. I'm not thinking about the timing. I know I'm going to be able to work out the timing. Okay? When I'm over here, I'm actually moving things around in the X sheet. I'm setting keyframes. I'm actually thinking about how it plays as a story. And this is my, this is my argument. It's probably a controversial one. I mentioned in a few videos ago that if you look at the middle period of Disney, um, there's some pretty weak stuff there. Uh, probably exemplified by films like Robin Hood or Aristocats. Okay. I, I would actually argue if you look at how weak that stuff is and you compare it to how much more compelling 
some anime is, for example. In other words, stuff that is not fully animated, but yet it really draws you in and has the same emotional effect. Well, what's the difference? When the guys who are supposed to be concerned with expression, attitude, emotion, the key poses, when that guy gets bogged down thinking too much about timing, the mechanics of how it's going to play, as opposed to capturing those um, key moments that make the story work emotionally and attitudinally, if you get bogged down prematurely on timing, then you get sucked into this illusion that tells you that somehow movement will sell your story. It won't. It's actually these magical still frames that sell the story. The animation is actually secondary to that. I would contend. Some people may disagree with me on that. But I can say that I do wear those two hats, and when I get bogged down trying to create something that's essentially complete before I should be, I, it, it's just kind of stressful because I'm wearing the wrong hat at the time based on the work that I'm trying to do. Okay. Having said that, let's backpedal and look at the workflow and see how it's, it's evolved just a little bit, just in the last two days, by bumping into the difficulties associated with this particular shot. Okay, and by the way, what I what I essentially did was create the keyframes, but I, I actually I'll give you I'll give you a specific example of where it really goes awry. If you look at Luca here, all his all that's happening is his eyes are moving. Okay, if I'm in Mr. Drawing Hat mode, I'm creative mode. I'm just gonna draw the initial pose. Obviously, Luca doesn't have a mouth yet, but I'm going to draw the initial pose. I'm going to do the whole thing. If I do ink and paint, I'm going to obviously complete the entire um, pose. So that's what we have here without a mouth. Now, if I say to myself, okay, well, wait, his eyes, I want his eyes to dart. You know, I want his eyes to kind of do this because that just brings him to life, you know, so you can tell he's really thinking and he's concerned or whatever. The way I'm typically going to do that here in um, in Krita, if I'm if I'm kind of moving fast and I'm flying along, what I'm actually going to do, and I'm going to save this so I so I can just kind of like not um, not get bogged down with um, hang on X Control X Control V. Okay. I'm going to go over here. Control X, Control V. Okay, so now what I did was I put the two eyes on separate layers. And if you take them back out, obviously you have a little bit of a problem, right? Okay, so that's okay. I mean, come on. It takes... How long does it take to, to patch this? One second? One, one thousand, two, one thousand? Okay, so it takes two seconds to patch this just so I know that the eye thing is going to work. And now I can actually um, marry these two together and just hit the animate, or the, uh, whatever it's called, the transform tool. And I could just set some keys, you know. Dit, 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 dit. Okay, so it is a surprisingly important question to ask, when should that happen? And basically the answer is when it shouldn't happen is when you're, in the process of doing ink and paint and just trying to get these frames you're building up the what I would call the static assets we're not focused on movement we're focused on the poses that are gonna make the movement later and oftentimes there is only one the static image is in fact all you need because you're gonna use the plastic tool or the animate tool or some techniques I'm gonna show in blender uh, which kind of takes the OpenTunes plastic tool and puts it on steroids, actually. Um, so my point is, this isn't clean, but man, is it quick and dirty to, 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 to set that up so you can go ahead and animate it later. Now I've got my individual layers. You know, this is on its own layer, so I can export that and 
bring in open tunes, do the animation there. If it's simple enough, I could do it in creative, whatever. You know, it's not like there's a rule, okay? But, okay, so I've kind of explained why this problem of wearing Mr. Creative Hat and Mr. Editorial, Managerial, Logistical, Task-Oriented Execution Guy Hat are two different guys. Uh, maybe you're not that way, okay? <laughs> but... I've been thinking a lot because I'm trying to do what I'm trying to do f faster than conventional wisdom would say is possible. You know, can one person by themselves create this whole cartoon that's an hour long, not an hour long, but it's close, you know, in a reasonable time frame? And I contend that you can. So the first thing I'm going to show today, let's see how we do it on time. Ten minutes, okay, cool. The first thing I'm going to show today is one way that's just so simple and economical that it really turned out to be a big win, which is this. I've got this image viewer called Farstone Image Viewer, Faststone, I'm sorry, Fast, F-A-S-T, Stone Image Viewer. It's just, it's just like, a, you know, it's like the Windows Explorer. It's just a file browser that shows you thumbnails. It's kind of cool that you can... There's a couple things nice about it that you can do. Number one is I can actually set the size of the thumbnails to be bigger or smaller than what I have here. Got an instant preview. I can show it full screen if I want to. Um, and I can hit the E key, which I'm not going to do, which will automatically open the current file that's selected in Creta. So as an image viewer, it's quite useful. But here's the killer feature that I didn't even realize until yesterday because I was really thinking about this problem. I've got these poses from my storyboard. What do you do if you're using the storyboard as sort of the authoritative, authoritative source of what's the flow of the story? What's the editing of the story? What do you do when you realize that there is something that's out of sequence? Or worse, you realize that you need an additional frame in between two frames that sort of thing especially because in many of these open tune shots we actually have the image sequence so if we and you saw this happen with the tunes level with the tunes raster levels which is all one single file is that if you introduced a new frame let's say in between these two boom all the scenes that reference that TLV file are broken. Okay? Suck on that for a minute and think about it. So the further you get into the project, potentially the greater the odds that one change is going to break everything you did before and you're going to have to go back and spend two hours fixing all those scenes. You can do it. The fix is possible, but it's a pain. It's a major pain. Well, here's the killer feature. The killer feature is that Fast Stone Image Viewer, you can't, okay, in, in, in this folder, all you see are the qualifying image formats that it understands. Well, it turns out there's actually another file in this folder that it put there, and it's called fssort.ini. It's just a simple text file. But what it is is it's just a list of file names that are in the current folder. Well, who cares? Think about it. It's called FS sort. And I thought about that. I thought, wait a second. If I need another shot here in between these two, let's say I got let's say I'm gonna come back to this wide shot from up above. I can go control C, control V. I think I can. I'm just going to control C, control V. Okay, there it goes. Okay, there it is. So that's a copy. So it's not inserted into the sequence of the, it's not inserted in the image sequence because it's, it's a copy. It basically goes to the end of the chain. However, within the viewer, I can come up here, pop it in there. The fssort.ini file gets updated, and I can look at this 
from any of my network machines and when I load this folder up I'm gonna see these images in this order every time that means that I can literally build up an edit of the show in thumbnails and I can glance at this and immediately know what the flow of my show is like whoa that's cool now I'm gonna delete that one there's no point keeping it around refresh the view and so clearly because this is what happens is you know you've got this shot and what I'm doing is I hit the E key loaded into Krita and I just put annotations on the th on the thumbnail it's not actually a thumbnail this is actually a full-size shot that means I could take this pose right here of Mel and reuse it in another shot because the white here is all actually alpha channel it's transparent so that means every every time I use a character in a shot they're already ready to be used in another shot which happens a lot of the time so this shot this shot and this shot are actually all just slight modifications of the same shot now I'm getting some pretty serious leverage okay so I recommend the fast stone image viewer um, I'm checking my notes here about what I wanted to cover okay so one of the questions that came up for me was what if I want to what if I want something a little better than the plastic tool what if I want to try to be a little more expressive and I, I my solution was go to blender you know you can do a lot with the plastic tool um, and I, I did use it in this shot but let me kind of show you what the workflow was here it's kind of interesting so it was this shot that I was working with and initially this was just a pencil drawing right just like these this is how all the frames in the storyboard start out okay so I I, I hit the E key and I drag the um, the sketch and I'm gonna not save this so I drag the sketch into Krita and then I won't belabor the ink and paint process but what I did was I did ink and paint I added a shadow layer um, actually significantly I didn't add a shadow layer what I did was I just I just this is what I had and I saved that out and I said okay what if I want to get a little more control over the animation of this character okay so here's here's what you do and we'll just go ahead and save this and I guess we'll kind of redo from scratch in blender and I'm I'm using blender 2.79 you guys know I'm not a Luddite but I am not a blender 2.8 fanboy yet uh, and it and let's be fair it took about eight years for me to really be sold on <clears throat> blender 2.5 series so I'm sticking with it for the moment <clears throat> but here you, you go you wanna go to the mesh menu images as planes which is a plug-in yeah but it's it comes with blender 2.79 so basically blender 2.79 portable is what I'm using okay so in my viewer here I can I can look at uh, thumbnails so I'm going here and I'm going to look in the extras storyboard folder okay so I scan down here and what I find is this okay now over here I'm gonna make it shadeless just because I I don't wanna mess around in this particular case with adjusting the color um, either using lights or by turning up and down the emit level I just do shadeless so that what I'm gonna see in blender and what's gonna render is exactly the image that I created in Krita so I bring that in Boom. okay you say well wait a second isn't this right here a bit of a problem well actually it's not I can just come over here into the uh, into the UV editor and I want to use a pencil doing erase alpha 
and we'll just make it kind of big. And for our purposes, we can just erase the alpha. Now, that means I can do what I'm about to do and render it all out. And when I load the project again later, if I haven't deleted the annotation here, then the annotation will come back. I'll have to erase it again. Okay. What I could do is I could actually pack the image into Blender. Okay, so let me see right here. Open image. Ah, right here. Pack an image as embedded data into the blend file. So I could erase the alpha and I could I could pack it. If I pack it, I lose something. What do I lose? I lose the fact that the next time I load this project, it's not going to automatically reload the image with whatever changes I might have made in Krita, which did happen in this case. Because initially, everything I'm about to show, I did with this image. And then later I added the shadows and everything just propagated downstream from the image to Blender to open to, to, to my render from Blender which is an image sequence that came into open tunes to my final shot with the background and everything. Well, what do you do? Well, what you do, it depends on it depends on what you're trying to accomplish, okay? But generally speaking, the simplest path would be to just subdivide this a few times, okay? And now the question I had for myself is what if I wanted to actually, um, you can see what happens, obviously. What if I wanted to map this geometry more carefully around the character in order to have more control? That might sound like a bunch of gibberish to you at the moment, but I'll show you what I mean. So I subdivide it at a level of subdivision detail that feels about right, okay? Okay, so now the following step's kind of important, and I have to refer to my notes. I actually took careful notes on the exact steps. You import the images as planes, which I just did. You size it to the camera view, um, which I don't think is actually strictly necessary. Okay. Now what I did, what I did was I'm in edit mode right now. I hit the U key and I go ahead and unwrap it. Okay. That means I can see the image here I don't want to paint I want to view so I could actually make modifications to the UV map I don't need to do that right now but I've unwrapped it and this is this is the key thing that's interesting because the problem is if you want to make the modification I was kinda of talking about you, you really can't do it because when you drag the vertices around it actually stretches the image you want that later but you don't want it now Here's, here's what you do. Um, you want to make sure you're not in texture mode, by the way. If you change the mapping from UV mapping and you're in texture mode, you're still seeing the projected texture. And so when you move the vertices, you still see everything stretch. So you want to be in material mode. And I'm going to turn off only render, by the way. Okay. Then I can go over here to my image, my texture, and change it from UV mapping to generated mapping. Now I can move these guys around and it doesn't affect the stretching. Okay? So I'm creating a better control grid around his eye as just as an example. All right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put this level of protection around his eyebrow. And I'm not guaranteeing, by the way, that this particular example is going to be like the most amazingly great example of what I'm trying to do. But I'll see what I can do. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm hitting the control key. I'm going to select this area. I'm going to go ahead and give it some more, more resolution. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo the projection. Because, well, actually, if I switch this back to UV mapping, see what happened? 
Well, what I want to do is I want to unwrap it again so it reconjigures the now modified mesh to match or the it reprojects the image back onto the mesh that's already been reconfigured. At this point, quite interestingly, I can really get detailed with my character. Now I'm going to actually hit undo a couple times here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the animal plugin and we're going to animate points so at the beginning of my animation I'm going to just do an insert inserts a key I'm going to make this the dope sheet not the grease pencil so I can actually see my keys and now I'm not going to I'm not going to deal with timing I'm just trying to see if I can do something that lets me avoid drawing more frames you know and potentially getting a little off character you know can I solve the animation problem that I have at hand as efficiently as possible. There's many cases where this is not the most efficient method, okay? Um, but kind of interesting because I could kind of show some concern in his expression, like so. I could furrow his brow a bit and then yeah I do have to come back here and compensate for that change I'm I, again I'm doing this real quick and dirty okay now here will be an example of what what happens if you don't increase the resolution actually it works really well a lot of the time but you do do have a lot of control you could take uh, for example his entire head like so and then I'm gonna hit the period key so that it rotates on the cursor not on the center of the selection and I'm just gonna go ahead and give that Okay. Insert another key. Jump out of edit mode. So yeah, again, this is not the greatest example ever, but you know, kind of change his expression there and move him around. Okay, so you can think of lots and lots and lots of applications of this. What you don't want to do is <laughs> you don't want to clean up your mesh after you've set animation keys that would be bad because then what happens is something like that <laughs> which makes sense you completely change the ordering of the vertices so it it just all goes to pot okay but anyway this is the actual shot with the actual animation that I did And then what I what I what I did was I had Blender render this out uh, as just a three-frame image sequence. And then when I brought the shot into Cre or into Open Tunes, because Blender uses the same naming convention that Krita and Open Tunes do, which is file name. If you if you put in a file name in Blender that you're going to save your rendered images to, and you add a period at the end of it. Then it'll go file name, period, four digits, which is exactly what OpenTunes wants. So then, if I go into my, um, my scenes, scene number 777 has Luca animation in a folder. I just drag the first image. And by the way, another thing about FastTone Image Viewer is look at this. I can just, you know, I can preview it. I can actually fiddle around with. Um, I, I could actually make modifications to one image at a time, save it back, you know. I'm actually finding that just flipping, like old school animators did, is a really good way to 
get most of the way there in terms of whether your shot's going to look the way you wanted it to. So I just anyway, I just dragged the the three image sequence into Open Tunes, and <clears throat> I decided I I wanted another key. Okay, so what you have is this that that key right there is actually caused by the plastic tool. I just added one little key and then I have the plastic tool level stop here because here boom it switches to the other um keyframe from the sequence. All right. So then when we play it, it all looks pretty good. This is Lucas saying, "Oh geez, if they uh TNR realized that she lost her pendant. And so in this shot, Lucas says, well, if the soldiers find it, they're going to know that I lied. Okay, so we need to add lip sync to this shot. So that's that. That pretty much covers the, the integration of Blender. Um, yeah, that's it. That's everything I was going to cover today. So it was good for me to, to go through this because it's resetting in my mind the steps that are taken. But I like the I like the um, what is the word procedural nature of this workflow, where I can um, looking for my mouse. Boom! There it is. I like the fact that I can go from a storyboard to a creative file. to um, scenes to a folder this is where the batch file that does the conversions that I covered yesterday here in the scenes in the scenes folder if I save a my paint ORA file Krita gives me a warning and gives me the ability to save it also as a Krita file at the same time so it retains all image or all animation keys everything that the Aura file doesn't understand so they're both saved together and then I just run this batch file right here that will unpack the Aura file create a folder put it in the folder all the images that are in the Krita file are then uh, separated out they're ready to use and then the aura and Krita file are both moved into this folder that was just created so everything associated with this shot is in the same place with the only exception being the storyboard the initial storyboard drawing is up here in the storyboard folder so it's not a perfect system, but it's it's pretty solid. And so, uh, you know, one of the biggest things that recommends Blender in these scenarios, by the way, is that doing a 3D camera move is actually a little, like getting parallax, it's a little easier and more predictable in Blender. Enough said about that. I, it's just something I've noticed. Um, so I think that's it for, for now. Um, this is the more or less the final shot. I just need to add lip sync to it. And so back here, I just put an annotation on the storyboard that says still needs lip sync. So now needs open tune lip sync. So I can look at any of these shots and I know what their status is. This was done. It's number 772. This is done. It's number 773. I, I did not go the, the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shots that I did I have not gone back back and annotated the uh, the uh, storyboard but duh I mean you can see it's a full full color image so therefore it's a pretty good clue that maybe that shot is done but this is where I'm working now the basically you've got a sequence that kind of begins here um, and so I'm I'm going ahead and doing this sequence more or less in order to get back up to here and then we'll continue working backwards so anyway that's it for today as you guys know there will be more later